This is the seventh and um, hopefully the last of the market failure series. Um, in this uh, video I will talk about fossil fuels and the threat to sustainability. So again, this is related to common access resources and the threat to sustainability and I'll discuss some uh, possible government responses to um, the problem with fossil fuels and the threat to sustainability. So basically, just to give an overview of what the problem is, the problem really starts with um, the fact that there's a very um, sort of heavy demand, global demand for fossil fuels. So due to this heavy global demand for fossil fuels, you have a, um, a, a situation of overconsumption and overproduction of fossil fuels. Uh, the marginal social costs when it comes to fossil fuels um, far exceed the marginal private costs. So this is where the problem starts. Now, this overconsumption and overproduction results in, in, in massive external costs. As you can see here, um, a lot of the overuse of fossil fuels is linked to climate change. Uh, it's, leading, uh, it's causing changing global weather patterns, um, acid rain in some places, um, air and water pollution, risk of oil spills as well. Um, so that's causing massive external costs. Now, um, this is an example of a significant market failure on the global level and a very big threat to um, sustainability. First of all, um, the sustainability of the fossil fuels, but also the effect on the environment and the sustainability of um, the environment for future generations. So um, just to uh, review it, basically, there's a heavy global demand for fossil fuels, which is leading to overconsumption and overproduction and um, uh, massive external costs, and this raises the uh, marginal social cost to be higher than the marginal private cost. Um, these massive external costs are an example of a significant market failure and a big threat to sustainability. Now, one of the learning outcomes um, in this part of the syllabus is to identify and explain and also evaluate uh, the government responses to such threats to sustainability. So this is what we're going to be looking at in this slide. Now, some government responses to such threats to sustainability. The first one is using cap-and-trade systems. We've explained that in a previous video. Basically, what happens is that the government sets a maximum target, so maximum targets for emissions of those greenhouse gases, and then sells these targets as licenses or permits that firms can trade. This essentially creates an economic incentive for firms to cut emissions. So you're giving them an economic incentive to cut emissions. This is the first um, system or first solution. Uh, second solution is to set a carbon tax. Basically, what you do as a government is you tax companies based on their carbon footprint. Uh, and offer tax credits to companies who are investing in reducing their carbon footprint by investing in renewable energy and cleaner technology. But one of the challenges here is how do you measure the carbon footprint? So that's one of the weaknesses of um, this policy. So this is policy response number two. Uh, this leads us to policy response number three. Uh, some governments have decided to just legislate stricter environmental standards. So make it le make it a law that businesses have to have stricter environmental standards. What you do is the government uses its legal and um, regulatory power to force firms to be more environmentally friendly. But the problem here is that governments also need campaign contributions and they need votes from businessmen. So um, if you are seen as anti-business, that's not going to help your political career if you're running for office. Another uh, last policy response is basically subsidizing cleaner, greener energy. Uh, clean technologies cost more to produce the same amount of energy as fossil fuels. So the government needs to subsidize and to give firms an incentive to use them. Examples of cleaner energy, you've got solar power, wind power, hydropower. Uh, encouraging uh, people to uh, encouraging companies to design more energy efficient cars, energy efficient appliances. However, subsidizing, as is the case with any situation where you're using taxpayers' money, there's always an opportunity cost. So that's one of the disadvantages or the weaknesses of this policy. So you've seen four different examples of, of government policies that the government can uh, uh, sort of legislate or use 
to um, try and correct this market failure and to try and respond to such threats to sustainability. We've talked about cap and trade systems. We've talked about setting a carbon tax. We've talked about legislating stricter environmental standards for businesses. And we've talked about subsidizing cleaner, greener energy. Now, whatever response the government uh, chooses to um, respond to this threat to sustainability uh, will require certain things that, the go that all governments need to consider. First of all, these problems are of a global nature. Uh, for example, the problem of overfishing in the world's oceans. Uh, the oceans don't really belong to one specific country. The same with fossil fuels. This is a problem on a global scale. And also, due to the lack of ownership of common access resources, so in the case of overfishing, who owns the world's oceans, for example? And that's why effective response to the uh, problem of fossil fuels and the threat to sustainability will require international cooperation as the problems extend beyond national borders. So whatever policy responses out of the four that I introduced in the previous slide, whatever policy responses governments decide to take, that, that will require certain amounts of international cooperation because these problems extend beyond national borders. They can't be dealt with just locally.